He's back. Yeah, no content will satisfy you. As long as the egoic structure remains in place, no matter what you have or get, you won't be happy. You will always be looking for something else that promise greater fulfillment, that promise to make your incomplete, incomplete sense of self complete and feel that sense of lack and that feel feel that sense of lack you feel within. Identification with the body, apart from objects, other basic form of identification is my body. Firstly, the body is male or female, and so the sense of being a man or woman takes up a significant part of most people's sense of self. Gender becomes identity. Identification with gender is encouraged at an early age, and it forces you into a role, into conditioned patterns of behavior that affects all aspects of your life. Not, not just sexuality, it is a role many people become completely trapped in, even more so in some of the traditional societies than in Western culture where identification with gender is beginning to lessen somewhat. In some traditional cultures, the worst fate a woman can have is to be unwed or barren, and for a man to lack sexual potency and not be able to reproduce children. Life's fulfillment is perceived to be Full, is perceived to be fulfillment of one's gender identity. In the West, it is the physical appearance of the body that contributes greatly to the sense of who you think you are, its strength or weakness, its perceived beauty or ugliness relative to others. For many people, their sense of self-worth is ultimately bound up with their physical strength. Good looks, fitness, something in my teeth, <laughs> fitness and external appearance. Many feel a diminished sense of self-worth because they perceive their body as ugly or imperfect. In some cases, the mental image or concept of my body is a complete distortion of reality. A young woman may think of herself as overweight and therefore starve herself, when in fact she is quite thin. She cannot see her body anymore. All she sees is the mental concept of her body. which says, I am fat, or I will become fat. At the root of this condition lies identification with the mind. As people have become more and more mind-identified, which is the intensification of egoic dysfunction, there has also been a dramatic increase in the incidence of anorexia in the recent decades. If the sufferer could look at her body without the interfering judgment of her mind or even recognize those judgments for what they are instead of believing in them, or better still, if she could feel her body from within, this would initiate her healing. Those who are identified with their good looks, physical strength, or abilities experience suffering when those attributes begin to fade and disappear, as of course they will. Their very identity that was based on them is then threatened with collapse. In either case, ugly or beautiful, people drive, people derive a significant part of their identity, be it negative or positive, from their body. To be more precise, they derive their identity from the I thought that they erroneously attach to the mental image or concept of their body, which, after all, is no more than a physical form 
that shares the destiny of all forms. Impermanence in an ultimately decay. Equating the physical sense perceived body that is destined to grow old, wither and die with I always leads to suffering sooner or later. To refrain from identifying with the body doesn't mean that you neglect, despise or no longer care for it. If it is strong, beautiful or vigorous, you can enjoy and appreciate those attributes while they last. You can also improve the body's condition through right nutrition and exercise. If you don't equate the body with who you are, when beauty fades, vigor diminishes, or the body becomes incapacita incapacitated. This will not affect your sense of worth or identity in any way. In fact, as the body begins to weaken, the formless dimension, the light of consciousness, can shine more easily through the fading form. It is not just people with good or near-perfect bodies who are likely to equate it with who they are. You can just as easily identify with the problematic body and make the body's imperfection, illness or disability into your identity. You may then think and speak of yourself as a sufferer of this or that chronic illness or disability. You receive a great deal of attention from doctors and others who constantly confirm to you your conceptual identity as a sufferer or a patient. You then unconsciously cling to the illness because it has become the most important part of who you perceive yourself to be. It has become another thought form with which the ego can identify. Once the ego has found an identity, it does not want to let go. Amazingly, but not infrequently, the ego in search of a stronger identity can and does create illness in order to strengthen itself through them. Feeling the inner body, although body identification is one of the most basic forms of, e of ego, the good news is that it is also that the one that you cannot most easily go beyond. This is done by not trying to conceive yourself that you are not your body, but by shifting your attention from the external form of your body and from thoughts about your body, beautiful, ugly, strong, weak, too fat, too thin to the feeling of aliveness inside it. No matter what your body appearance is on the outer level, beyond the outer form, it is an intense and intensely alive energy field. If you are not familiar with inner body awareness, close your eyes for a moment and find out if there is life inside your hands. Don't ask your mind, it will say, I can't feel anything. Probably it will also say, give me something more interesting to think about. So instead of asking your mind, go to the ants directly. By this I mean become aware of the subtle feeling of aliveness inside them. It is there. You just have to go there with your attention to notice it. You may get a slight slight tingling sensation at first, then a feeling of, ener of energy and aliveness. If you hold your attention in your hands for a while, the sense of aliveness will intensify. Some people won't even have to close their eyes. They will be able to feel their inner hands at the same time as they read this. They then go to your feet. Keep your attention there for a minute or so and begin to, feel your, begin to feel your hands and feet at the same time. Then incorporate other parts of the body, legs, arms, abdomen, chest and so on into that feeling until you are aware of the inner body as a whole sense of aliveness. What I call the inner body isn't really the body anymore, but life energy. 
the bridge between form and formlessness. Make it an habit to feel the inner body as often as you can. After a while, you won't need to close your eyes anymore to feel it. Yeah, he's out.